friends, welcome here. If you're new, my name is Rebecca and my husband Murphy and I travel full time. Currently we are in Southeast Asia, more specifically we are in our Airbnb in Bangkok. Oh, this hair cannot even be contained by the frame today. So today I want to talk about how we afford full time travel. There's a lot of different ways to design a full-time travel life. You can either work full-time on the road, like digital nomad style. You can work a little bit, stopping here and there to work or working online a little bit, or you can work not at all. So this video is specifically going to be more geared towards working a little or not at all, since that's what I have experience with. That's how we kind of designed it. We've been traveling full-time now for about 15 months, and we spent the first about eight months working not at all, and then the past seven months just working like a little bit and everyone's lives are designed a little bit different everyone's financial situation is a little bit different but I just want to share a little bit about how we personally make it work let's get started so the first thing to consider like I said is how you want to design a life is it a time in your life where you want to not work at all and take a break from work or is it a time where you want to be working a little bit remotely or do you want to take your current career and work full time from the road? So for us, at least, we wanted to take at least a little time without working. We were sort of at a point in our lives where we were getting a little burned out and wanted some time free from our careers. So to do that for us took an enormous amount of planning. I would say about three years of planning. And we didn't always really know exactly how we were going to design our life of travel, but we knew we needed to start saving for it. So I think the biggest and most important piece of advice that I can give you is to get rid of debt. And the way that we did that, honestly, there's no like secret hack to it. It just became a priority. We prioritized it above everything else that we were doing with our money. So perhaps the biggest thing that we did was to simplify our life. We were renting at the time and I feel like the commonly accepted formula for renting is it's about 30% of your income, but we decided to rent a very, very small, not very nice apartment. I think it was less than 500 square feet and it was about 7% of our income. So it was a really, really small expense, which freed up a lot more funds to put towards paying off our debt. Oh, Murphy's back here now. You could just ignore him. The room is very small, so he's just gonna be some background. So the next thing that we did in order to pay down our debt was we decided to manage our money in a way where we had a very small emergency savings. So typically this is like six months expenses, but instead of doing six months expenses, we just did a very small amount in an emergency fund and aggressively paid the rest of our money towards debt. So this might not be for you depending on what just sort of your risk level is if you know someone in your family was to lose a job or if you were to lose a job this might not be something that you're comfortable with but it was something we were comfortable with because our expenses were pretty low. It helped us in the long run pay off debt faster. And the last thing we did to become debt free, honestly, we just made sacrifices. You know, there wasn't a lot of dinners out. There wasn't a lot of travel during that time. I think in those three years where we were really aggressively paying down our debt, I don't think we really went anywhere. We took like road trips to New Hampshire to go climbing. We weren't really going places because our priority was to become debt free and to be saving for a time of full-time travel. Okay, so besides becoming debt free which again the most important thing that you can do because it's gonna allow you to have a lot less expenses while you're traveling full-time the second thing that we did was have a side hustle we were both working full-time but we owned a business on the side so we had a yoga and massage studio that provided a good amount of additional income but I will say this was an enormous amount of work so I worked nine to five job at an advertising agency which required an enormous amount of time and energy and then on top of that was managing a business and managing a staff of seven to ten employees and a business that was open seven days a week it was an enormous amount of work but it's one of the things that led to the financial freedom that allowed us to travel full time so again it's all about what your priorities were we knew that we wanted this 
time to travel full time and see the world. So it was worth it for that amount of time to be putting that much energy into accruing enough money to do what we needed to do. And it's nice to just have a side hustle to diversify your income a little bit. Like I said, like we didn't have a big emergency fund, so if something were to happen to one of our full-time jobs, we always knew that we would still have an income with our side hustle. So your side hustle doesn't have to be as complex as owning a business. It could just be something that you do on the side a couple hours a week. Just two more points about managing money. So the first is that it was helpful for us to put our sort of travel adventure life money in a completely separate account. That's good just because as you see it accumulate, it helps you feel like you're accomplishing something and getting closer to your goals, but also it keeps you from spending the money. At first, we kind of just kept everything in our savings account with everything else. And it was hard to visualize what money was designated to what part of our life. So keeping it in a separate account can really keep you accountable to not spending that money until it comes time to actually travel. And the second thing is get yourself a credit card with a point system. So we personally use the Capital One Venture Card. So you can specifically redeem those either for cash or gift cards to certain brands, or they have the most value when you redeem them towards travel. So some of the flights that we took in Vietnam, like we didn't even pay for, we used credit card points for that. So the best thing that we found is in the years leading up to full-time travel, we used the credit card for everything, but paid it off every single month. So anything we would do, if it was like, we're gonna go buy groceries or we're gonna, what else did we do? eat, sleep, and work, I don't, I don't know. If we were gonna buy groceries or go buy something else, it would always go on the credit card so we could accumulate those points. But then the key to that is you gotta pay the credit card off every single month, otherwise you're just accumulating more debt and this, this is your debt cycle. So the next thing that we did in order to afford full-time travel was to sell our stuff. This was beneficial for a few reasons. The first is because we got rid of our place to live, so we had nowhere to put our stuff. But secondly, it provided additional income in the months leading up to leaving for travel. So we started selling our stuff about three or four months before we started traveling full time, and we sold everything. So all of our furniture, a lot of our kitchen stuff, I sold or donated about 90% of my clothes. Just got rid of everything. We primarily sold our stuff online. So I started out using Craigslist and I honestly wasn't really a fan of it. It was too anonymous, felt a little bit creepy at times, but I did start using for like the furniture and stuff, Facebook Marketplace. So this will post whatever you're selling to people in your area and you can see their profile. So you know like who you're meeting up with, what they look like, you can see if you even have like any friends in common. So I always tried to meet at a neutral place like a coffee shop or even like a parking lot of a store or something like that just so that people weren't coming to my actual apartment but it worked really well and we sold almost everything that way and it was sort of like little bits of money but at the end especially when you're like looking down the runway of like okay we're leaving in a matter of a couple months every single dollar makes a difference my next tip in affording full-time travel is to set small goals for yourself. So one of the things we did is do an overall estimate of how much money we thought we needed to travel and then broke that down into the number of days we wanted to travel so that we knew how much money we needed per day. That sounds excessive when I say it out loud. Have a type anus to me. It actually helped us stay motivated because we would earn small amounts of money and say, we just earned ourselves 10 days traveling. Setting little small milestones and goals helped us stay motivated towards our bigger goal. My next tip is to be flexible with your plan. Like I said, we started out not working at all and that was a really intentional decision for us. But then we sort of migrated over when we figured out we wanted to travel a little bit longer to working a little bit. And we've designed that in two different ways. So the first way was to stop traveling for a little bit. So we spent the summer in Far Harbor, Maine. We had full-time jobs there for a few months and then we started traveling again. And then in the months since then, 
done, I've done just a little bit of freelance work, so some brand strategy work, building websites, managing social media accounts, just little things to keep a little bit of income going and things that I can do remotely from Asia. I will say it, it's a little bit difficult because I have to be really selective in the things that I do because I need to work with someone who understands that I am traveling full time in Asia. So I'm originally from the United States, which is 12 hours behind. I'm typically working while everyone in the US is sleeping and I don't always have Wi-Fi, so things get done at a little bit of a slower pace. So I will say it's been pretty difficult, but luckily I'm working with people who completely understand that. So it's been a good way to have just a little bit of money coming in as we continue to travel. So the last thing and arguably the most important thing is the support of your friends and your family. We would not be able to do this if it was not for my friends and family. Especially my parents, like we essentially live at their house. Everything that we didn't bring with us on the road is stored in their attic. We stay there every time we're passing through town or pausing to regroup before we go to a new destination. We don't have to put our stuff in storage because it's all at their house, so that saves the expense of that. When we were traveling around in the bus, they let us put our bus in their garage for a couple weeks, honestly, while we were trying to fix some stuff up. And even like friends along the way. When we were traveling around the US in the bus, we would stop at friends' houses, they would give us a place to sleep. One of the best examples I can think of is when we were in Austin, Texas, and I had a friend there, we were staying with her, and at that time, we got a new battery for our solar setup in the van that we were living in. So we switched it all out, but then we were left with this like huge, heavy, old battery, which we probably could have taken to like a recycling center there or the dump there and paid to get rid of it. But instead, she took that battery, posted it on Craigslist, sold it for us, then loaned us the money, and so it ended up being something that we profited off of. So just having friends and family along the way to help you in big and small ways has been invaluable in our ability to travel full-time long-term. All right, so that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, friends. There's a YouTube video going on here. Eventually, you might want to put pants on. I don't know how to do this. What if was our dad? Those are from Vietnam. That was bad. Mm. Good at money. Good at other stuff. It could be something that <sighs> being overwhelming for hurts. So I always tried to meet at a place that was neutral. Thank you. <laughs> do you want to come in and just do the video? No.